Greetings, hello everybody. I've had a few people get in touch about Rudolf Steiner because I've been putting a lot of audio up of Rudolf Steiner's lectures. And I used to do kind of Steiner chats as well, but I haven't done one of them for a while. But I feel inclined to do one because some people got in touch saying, can you explain more about Steiner, Rudolf Steiner? You know, I've also been putting up videos of when during this solstice, summer solstice just gone, I went and walked in his footsteps where he went to Wales and um, went to the place called Penmenmar, walked the, the mountains and found all these stone circles. And he talked about stone circles in the past. You can listen to all them lectures on my channel or watch my little solstice stones video about that. But Steiner does so much. You know, he goes from biodynamic farming to how to bring up children to, you know, you name it, he discusses it. I'm more interested in his theology. So I thought I'd just do a little show about the theology he talks about and about all the, because um, he talks a lot about Lucifer and Araman, which I'm sure many of you know, I've heard them names and know of them as, you know, dark forces. And Steiner says, so I'm sort of paraphrasing all Steiner's work, but I would highly recommend you go and read his lectures if you're interested in this. He says that every human being, when they're born, a demonic entity enters that person. And everybody's got one from the moment they are born. And they live in us and they influence us and they live through us, really all the way up to the moment when we die. Now, these demonic entities cannot survive the death throes that we go through. They cannot enter the next realm. So when we die, they pop out of our body and then go and enter somebody else's body as a baby and live their life. And Rudolf Steiner says, this is what their mission is, is to try and get into the next realm, into the heavens. And you know, they're not allowed in there. You know, is this all part of the fall? I don't know. You know, the fall from heaven. You know, and they were sent down. Rudolf Steiner says that these demonic entities have been around forever. But in 1879, there was a big battle up in the heavens. Again, another war in heaven where once again, Michael the Archangel won the battle against the dark forces, these demons, these demonic entities. And he sent them all down to our planet, to Earth. Like, at first, I was a bit bewildered by that when I was reading all that. I was like, why is he sending them here? Why not send them, I don't know, to some help region or something? Well, there's a reason for that. And that region, reason is the purpose for human beings. And so these demonic beings that take over us humans are inside us, working with us. I think Steiner says they're in our nervous system, which is quite interesting that they are manipulating that and living their lives through us. And I've always been a believer that there's a there's something in us that isn't us, something in us that keeps trying to influence us, make us do naughty things, you know, tries to get us to, you know, jump out in front of that car kind of thing. But the reason us humans are here now, our mission is to redeem these demonic beings. And I thought that was, you know, I've always felt I've had a mission. And I think we all feel that really, you know, why are humans here? It's something you should be questioning if you're in this kind of work anyway, why am I here? What is my mission? What is my point? You know, we've all got different answers to that. But this is what Stein is saying. We are here to redeem the dark forces. He says we do this by prayers. He gives us quite a few different mantras to use. And that we also work on bringing the Christ consciousness into ourselves. So obviously Stein is coming from a Christian point of view, but it's not the organized religion version of Christianity. He's looking at the stream, the Christ stream that can come to anybody. You know, St. Paul said when he was doing his work, of bringing the gospels and doing this work that's being asked 
he was saying, not I, but Christ in me. The Templars used to use this, not I, but Christ in me, as they go out to do their you know, warrior work, their Templar work. So it's not, it is us doing it, but at the same time, we have to do it with the permission of, or with the help of the Christ. It's not with the permission. We shouldn't be doing it ourselves because that's a bit egotistical. Like who are we to be, you know, demon hunters and demon destroyers but we're not destroying them because with the redeeming the redemption everybody returns to the divine at some point but they have to go through redemption and stein is saying that we have to we are the ones that are helping the demons the dark forces find that redemption i've got a rather noisy ice cream man going around outside a little demonic <laughs> temptation there of going for an ice cream where was I? So, we have these demonic entities within us that we are trying to redeem within us, ourselves, and then hopefully we can help others redeem them. But I think he also believes there are other kind of, well, he does, he says there's other entities around elementals in, you know, the trees, the water, the sea, the air, everything has an elemental and we're here to help them as well and work with them. And he's very clear on this point of that if we don't work with nature, with the elementals that are part of nature, like every flower, every tree, every animal, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, it was rude of me to say blah, 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 but you know what I mean. Um, if we don't work with them, work against them, then them elementals will go to the dark forces and work with them because they want to work with someone. And if we're not going to work with them, they'll go and work you know, with the dark forces because it's, you know, they want to do group work. But we can also free these bad elementals by, again, redeeming them with the Christ consciousness, not I, but Christ in me. Now, there is a statue of him, uh, Steiner had made, a statue that's the representation of, of humanity, of humans, and it's of Christ in the middle. And he's got Lucifer above him and Araman below him. And he says, our, Steiner says, our man comes up from below into us and Lucifer comes down through the head. So Lucifer's playing with our mind. Our man's coming through and trying to deceive us and to distract us. You know, the, the main mission of the dark forces is to disconnect us from the divine or to make us lose our faith or make us not believe in God. You know, their whole mission is, according to Stein, is to get our souls and to take us into this, what he calls the ape sphere. Now this ape sphere is quite um, a complicated subject. I still don't quite understand where it is. Some people think it's on this earth already. It's like another dimension. Others say it's the moon. Others say it's outside of this world. But whatever it is, it's being, this ape sphere is being created by Lucifer and Araman. It's like a false world and for those that don't find God in their lives, when they die, somehow they manage to get them to go to the ape sphere, which is like a fourth world. I say to people when I've been talking about it, you know, Steiner meetings and things, a lot of us discuss it as being, you know, like the movie, The Matrix. Well, all the humans in The Matrix are in their little eggs being, you know, stifled by the machines and being, you know, their consciousness is in a false world but they think they're in a real world. Well, that's what's going to happen in this ape sphere, I believe. I'm happy to have any comments by people that know more about this down below, because I want to try and get a discussion going on this. would like to talk to more people. If anyone knows more about this and wants to do a show, please get in touch, because it'd be nice to have someone to uh, go back and forth with. I know a lot of Steiner people, getting them to do a show is kind of difficult, and I understand why not everybody wants to put their work on YouTube or on, into the electronic form, because I myself believe that Araman is part of the electronic world. You know, and is deceiving us with this false reality of, you know, I'm pointing at, I'm not pointing at you, I'm pointing at my laptop here. And this false uh, meta universes and things like that that are come in or have come arrived. But I also know from when I lived in America, I used to speak to a lot of uh, American Indians about what their old 
beliefs, and their beliefs still are, but you know, their ancient beliefs were that the dark forces travel through rivers, through streams, through currents of water and air, so on the wind as well. And I, you know, electricity is a current that streams through our laptops and such things. So I'm, I'm a strong contender that this is another way of having dark forces manipulate us through deluding us to keep using these machines and be on our phones and such like. You know, I turn my phone off every night but I easily get distracted by it in the daytime. So I try to keep it away from myself. You know, it's down to the individual, you know, how they use it or whatever, but it is another temptation away from being awake and real because you're looking at a false kind of way of living or looking at your, you know, your Facebook and your Instagram and such like, you know, they're all electronic. Ape sphere type places. But going back to how we redeem them, we have to work on ourselves. We can't just go and do it willy nilly. We have to be a prepared person, which is why Steiner has, like Gurdjieff, exercises. And he does lots of lectures of how we work on ourselves so that we become a more, I'd like to say, perfected person, more in tuned person, a more harmonious person. You know, again, I'm using Gurdjieff words here, but I'm sure Steiner meant the same kind of thing. They are quite alike in their teachings, but there are slight differences, which I'm not going to go into here because I want to talk about the dark forces and the elementals and Araman and Lucifer's hordes and how they're trying to manipulate us. I'm still trying to figure out how it is we work with them in our body, but I'm pretty sure it's more of a case of working on yourself, becoming the real eye, like Gurdjieff talks about, the real you in it in you and not be the one of the eyes that's probably being manipulated by this dark entity inside us. I'm not saying you need to go and embrace Christianity, but understanding what the Christ stream is, which is a loving, redeeming stream, or even a Buddhic stream, you know, from the Buddha, his way of understanding uh, how to be awake and alive in this world, you know, being real. The dark forces in and around us will try and distract us from that. I talk about that in a lot of my shows of how we are distracted away from doing this kind of work. And that we have to work on ourselves to be developed enough to be able to do holy work, <laughs> you know. But by embracing the Christ into our hearts, the Christ consciousness, sorry, I should have said that, by embracing the Christ consciousness into our hearts, I'm not saying you need to go and read the New Testament, though it has all the esoteric teachings in it. Don't just read it as a story. You know, if you're working on this kind of thing, the more you read them kind of uh, stories, the Gospels and such like, and the ones that aren't in the Bible, you can see glimpses of the esoteric teachings and they will start working on you and inside you. And, in, you know, if you're into your inner self, you won't be just doing the exterior version of the teachings. You'll be looking at the interior, the esoteric, which is what helps us to develop. Now, most people will poo-poo poo -poo this kind of work and don't believe in demons and such like. I have for quite a few years said <laughs> that I don't, I believe that aliens are demonic forces deluding people. And I used to write about in a magazine that's now defunct about how when I went to Germany and various other European places and looked at the churches and the cathedrals and such things, I saw a lot of iconography and paintings and drawings that looked like, you know, this is this is people dancing with the devils, but they look like grey aliens. And I wish I'd still had the photos of all that, but that was on my old laptop that died. Yeah, well, yeah. Anyway, so I think this is an ongoing thing. It's been going on forever you know, probably since humanity first arrived on this planet in whichever way you want to believe. I've said before, go and discover your own, what you believe is the creation myth, whether it's Anunnaki, God, whatever. The dark forces have been here as well. And as I was saying earlier in this show, they're here to manipulate us and to stop us returning to God. Maybe this is a test world to see whether we're worthy to go to the heavens. Maybe. But it'd be the dark forces that try and stop us. And the way to stop that is to work on yourself and have faith 
in something and belief in something, hopefully a divine source of some kind. And, you know, keep your body pure and your heart pure and your mind pure. And don't be distracted by the temptations that the dark forces bring to you. So this redemption that Steiner is telling us to work on, as I was saying, he's talking about using the Christ consciousness. Not I, but Christ in me. And he gives various little mantras. And I've got a, a book of some of this, which is to do with the, he calls it, um, he, he started work on a Gertianum's building in Dornach. And it was a building built to harmonious geometry, you know, sacred geometry, such like. And they had a foundation stone and he had a, a series of mantras and prayers to go with it. Oh, hold on, I'm looking at the German version. So I've got the translations here somewhere. And again, he talks about, you know, taking being the light divine. We can bring the Christ consciousness, be the sun, as in the sun in the sky, the solar energy. Then we can work on against the dark forces. Who will try their best to snuff us out. And Steiner says, at the turning of the time, the spirit light of the world entered the stream of earthly being. Darkness of night had held its sway. Day radiant light streamed into souls of men. Light that gives warmth to simple shepherds' hearts. Light that enlightens the wise heads of kings. Light divine, Christ's son, warm now our hearts, enlighten now our heads that good may become what we from our hearts would found, what we from our heads would direct in conscious willing. We take up this light divine Christ sum. And again, it's all back to developing the will, which I've done in a few shows recently. Okay, they were on Gurdjieff and the centers, but I had talked about the will in that and in various other shows, developing the will. Again, an alchemical way of, working on oneself you're transforming yourself and I've said in previous shows and I know a few people poo-pooed me for this but Alistair Crowley's book Magic is probably one of the best books on how to develop the will he does I've, I've said before you know whoever he was and whatever he did I don't know if I'd have liked him or not if I met him in real life but his book on magic he understood how to develop the will but it's how you use the will back to being a Jedi are you being a using the will in a dark sea lord type of way or are you using the will in you know a good jedi kind of way the way we develop our will is it's neutral like the force in star wars and it's how you use it depends whether it's for the good or for the bad and what color your lightsaber is we want ours to be sun colored solar powered <laughs> so that we could go forth and do the right work because everything Everyone, every creature, every being that the divine has created is always welcome back to the divine if they seek redemption you know, and want to admit to their sins, ask for forgiveness, and you know, the divine source is all welcoming back and embracing. The divine source is not going to take anyone back that cannot see what they've done is wrong, does not take anyone back that will not be, be aware of what sin it has done. You know, we have to be aware of our sins, which is another part of the work that Steiner and Gurdjieff talk about. You know, it's like the looking at ourselves and seeing what we really are. And instead of going, oh, poor me, or oh, look what I did in the past, and realize that was the past, why we did those things, and why we wouldn't do them now. It was probably a different eye back then doing that kind of work. Of, you know naughty stuff where now you're you're developing yourself we've all got the chance to redeem ourselves and redeem others but we must always ask for protection and we must always as i was saying earlier do it through asking for the christ consciousness buddhic consciousness divine help an archangel's help you know saint michael is one of the best to call upon for help and protection against dark forces especially since he's the one that took, did the battles in heaven and led the good angels against the horde of dark angels. You know, we have higher beings we can ask for help from and ask for protection from. Doing it by ourselves 
can be quite dangerous. You know, and again, that's the ego thinking it can do it by itself. When we need to be working with the divine to do this kind of work. So I know it sounds all a bit scary that all of us are born with, or when we're born, this little demonic entity enters into us. I'm going, I think I'm sure I've got them lectures up on my YouTube channel, otherwise I'll look for them and put them up because I know I did record them. And I, it's just something I wanted to talk about with Stein because so many people got in touch saying, I've done so much Steiner lately, can I do a little introductory? So that's just one introductory, one side of him from the theological side of, of what his work is. But I do also recommend his lectures on good farming, which is biodynamics, educating children, which is very important. The children of the future, we've got to make sure that they're not being programmed, but are being brought up and shown how to be the true individual that they are. And he's done many other things as well. Bless him. God bless Rudolf Steiner. Anyway, that's my little show on Steiner and the dark forces. I'll probably do more on it at some point, or if someone wants to, as I've said, come on and do a debate or a chat or talk to me more about this, I would love that to happen. So until next time, thank you. Peace and out.